to um, introduce Daryl Greer. Um, I was quite interested when I was reading a little bit of information about Daryl. Um, he, he started um, his first employment in the dairy industry, and my, my grandfather was in the dairy industry early days on the Gold Coast, um, and then moved into um, a, a career of a singer or a guitarist. Was that just misspent youth, or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, from then on, he's had, he's had a stellar career by the looks of it, um, with, um, within the, the legal sector, um, and, and it's been employed all over the world from places from London and, and then more recently based um, in the Gold Coast hinterland um, and, and more recently moving into um, writing some, some pretty prominent books. Um, so it gives me great, great pleasure to um, introduce him. His, his famous book, The Election, I'm sure we're going to hear about that a little bit more today. And um, I'd like you to all um, make welcome to Daryl Greer. Thank you. I just want to clear something up. Uh, my interest in the dairy uh, industry was uh, working on a milk run yeah. <laughs> when I was 15. <laughs> um, yes. Well, thank you for having me uh, this morning. One thing I've noticed getting around the various rotary clubs uh, around the Gold Coast is that you're always, without fail, very, very welcoming. And there's been no uh, change there this morning. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit about myself, uh, how I came to be a writer. Uh, I'll finish with a little bit about my latest release, which is this one, Calvis. And uh, I'll do a very short reading um, from the book as well. And if you have any questions after that, then I'm very happy to answer them for you. Uh, well, I am Queensland born and bred, and one of the few uh, Gold Coasters who actually come from the Gold Coast. I was educated <laughs> here. Uh, had my first job here at the Southport Courthouse. And, um, but I have spent a lot of time in other places. Uh, Ten years in the tropics, Cairns, Port Douglas, Moscow, um, followed by 20 years in London. And in between all of that, uh, visits to numerous countries, about 40 I think was the last count. Uh, some of them like France, Morocco and the United States have been back too many times. Uh, travel I've found is not any good for the constitution. It's a great way to find uh, ideas for characters and stories for books. Uh, and in fact, it was while I was living in London that I came up with the idea uh, for Calvus. And I happened to be quite close to the places where I needed to be doing my research. I am a lawyer by profession, and I specialize in commercial litigation. I particularly enjoy David and Goliath situations and especially where I'm rep representing the Davids in this world. Um, my life as a lawyer has been interesting and varied. Uh, I recall one day walking down Chancery Lane in London, dressed in a three-piece suit, carrying a briefcase, armed with my brolly, and thinking back to the days when I practiced in North Queensland, uh, where I dressed in shorts, an open neck shirt, long socks, <coughs> long socks and hush puppies. Uh, in quiet times, I'd take a light aircraft up to Cooktown and see if, see if I could drum up some business in the local pub. <laughs> Chancery Lane, on the other hand, is the hub of London's uh, legal world. Uh, on one side is Lincoln's Inn, uh, which houses hundreds of barristers and some highbrow law firms, while on the other side is where my office at the time and the offices of many other law firms were situated. And we were a stone's throw from the Royal Courts of Justice in the Strand, that famous cathedral-like building which I'm sure you've seen at least on television. So in that background I've wondered whether anywhere in the world there's another lawyer who's had such a vastly different practice as I have. I suppose it's a natural instinct for lawyers to write, although I have come across a few who have uh, a bit of trouble in that department. But for me, I'm deeply passionate about it, although I didn't know it myself until the, the early 90s. It was around then that I simply sat down at my computer, typed a title, then the first line, then the second, and so on. With, the, with no university or creative writing course behind me, I had at that time no idea how to structure a novel. 
or that I should consider writing a plot line, some character biographies and so forth, before attempting the actual story. The first one was a learning curve, but I surprised myself and achieved what I thought at the outset I couldn't do. I actually finished the novel. After that, it was time to move on to the second one, which happened to be the election, which uh, Clinton mentioned and which features heavily on my website. Uh, that one was self-published by me a few years ago. I spent a long time trying to secure a publisher for it and in the end gave up uh, all hope and just published it myself. Uh, that's a political thriller, which is set slightly into the future on the premise that there will one day be another referendum on whether Australia should become a public republic. This time the Republicans win. And this is followed by a race for the position as President of the New Republic. There is a detailed description on my website, uh, all the W's, darylgreer.com. After years trying to find a publisher for that one, I, try, I, I decided, as I said, to publish it myself, and that was quite a daunting exercise. But I managed to do it, and ended up with some quite respectful reviews and readers' comments, which you can find on the website. And somewhere down the track, I came up with the idea for this one. They say you should write what you know, so typically I should be writing legal thrillers. While I have a couple of manuscripts of that nature, um, Calvus, I wanted to do something, in Calvus I wanted to do something very, very different, something that would tax my brain a little more. While living and writing in London, I had been spending about a year of my spare time, not that it was a lot of spare time, but a year of my spare time on my earlier manuscripts. But for Calvus, as it's partially set in the first century, and I'm not quite old enough to have experienced life in those times, I was forced into spending three years on this one because of the huge amount of research required. I confess to having a fascination for the ancient Romans, and my 20 years in the UK enabled me to visit the many sites around the country where there's ample evidence of their occupation. One such site is St Albans, named after Albanus, uh, Britain's first Christian martyr who died there in AD 304. And that's only about a half an hour's drive from where I was living at the time in London. During Roman times, St Albans was known as Verulamium. In its time, a rather large Roman outpost of about 8,000 inhabitants. The theatre alone, the remains of which are quite evident today, was built by the Romans to seat 6,000. Once my imagination took hold, I wondered what life would have been like for people who lived there. And so the seminal idea for Calvus was formed. All I needed was a bit of a story, and I could sit at my computer and start typing. Write what you know, they say, so I had to throw in a trial. But how did Romans conduct trials in the first century? Of course I had no idea. Well, three years later, numerous visits to the Verulamia Museum, several visits to the British Museum in London, emails to and from the museum's archaeologists, and of course, countless hours on the internet. I had my draft manuscript, the first of many. The first century Romano-Jewish historian Josephus mentions that the Romans crucified almost 10,000 people in Jerusalem alone during the many rebellions in the first century prior to the siege of Jerusalem in AD 70 and many more in peacetime. Some estimate the number of Jews that faced the cross in all of Palestine was as high as 200,000 a century or so earlier, in what we now know as Italy, the Romans crucified 6,000 followers of Spartacus along the Appian Way. Despite those dreadful numbers, most people today only seem to know the name of one person who was ever crucified, which leads me to my story. In the early part of the tale, it's AD 30, and we find Julianus Tadius Calvus, a youthful Roman legionary, attending his first cru crucifixion. As the prisoner takes his last breath, their eyes meet, and Calvus is overwhelmed by a mysterious sensation which has a profound effect on the rest of his life. When the soldiers cast lots for the condemned man's clothing, reluctantly Calvus accepts his sandals. Following the Claudian invasion of Britannia in AD 43, Calvus, now a centurion and married to Vipsania, is posted to Verulamium where he is second in charge. Maintaining control is challenging. Not all Britons welcome the Romans with open arms, but he excels and impresses his superior 